Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so today I've got a watercolour brush review for you. Um, these brushes are made by a company called Fumui. Um, they contacted me a while ago and asked if I'd like to review a set of their brushes. And of course I said, yeah, that'd be great, send me a set. Um, but only send me a synthetic set, I don't use animal hair. So they sent me this set of brushes here. And that's what I'm going to be reviewing today. Now, before I start the review, a um, bit of a backstory on these brushes, actually. Uh, a good friend of mine here on YouTube, Alan Owen, you probably all know Alan, he paints watercolours, he's been on YouTube for a long time. In fact, he's been painting watercolours for over 70 years. So what Alan Owen doesn't know about watercolour brushes isn't worth knowing. Now, I was talking to Alan the other day on the phone and I told him that I'd just been sent these brushes and Alan had been sent a set of brushes, not exactly the same as these. Alan got sent the travel brush set by Fumui and he'd done a review on them on his channel and he was telling me about them, that he really likes them, they're really good brushes. So I'm really looking forward to trying these out. I'll leave a link to Alan's channel in the, in the uh, description below so you can go and look at Alan's um, review as well. Alan, you'll often see Alan painting with them just in his watercolour demos. He, he kind of uses them quite a lot so you know they must be good brushes. So they came in this box and all it says on the box is artist brushes, um, artist, brush, artist brush set for watercolour, gouache and ink painting. Enjoy painting, create your masterpiece and that's all it says on the box. It doesn't even really say what's in them. So we'll open them up and uh, we'll take a look. Is anybody getting ASMR from this uh, nice crinkly sounding cellophane? It's probably just me. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's get them open and let's take a look at them. Okay, so straight away it's a really nice sturdy box. You could probably use that on its own for a brush case. So these are synthetic watercolour brushes. Um, fake squirrel in fact they're advertised as synthetic squirrel so we've got a size 16 flat got another flat brush there size 8 we've got a cat's tongue size 16 and they're all individually wrapped as well which is nice very protected I've got a set of round brushes in here we've got a size 14 and these have got the, the plastic caps on the top as well. Size 12, size 8, size 4, and what's that one? A size 0. So we've got a nice comprehensive set of, of brushes there. That's a nice complete set, really. I mean, what more would you need? Maybe a rigger brush and a large wash brush of some kind, either a large flat brush or a large squirrel mop brush or something. Apart from that, you've pretty much got all you need right there. So we've got eight brushes in total. And um, on the website, it does say about the construction of these, that these are actually um, solid birch wood handles, copper ferrules with nickel plating on them, so you're going to have zero problems with rust um, on those ferrules at all. They actually feel very nice. They're finished very nice as well. They, they just instantly feel like a nice quality brush. So that's a, a great start there. They are covered in either gum arabic or glue. They're quite stiff. So I'm going to need to um, soak all of these before I can actually use them. That's quite a funny shape there. Maybe when that's soaked um, and it forms its natural shape, that should be okay, hopefully. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll take the cellophane off all of these and take the protective caps off as well. And I'll soak them in some water for a little while and get them nice and soft and then we'll come back and have a good proper look at them. Okay, so I've just soaked them just for a few seconds and the glue comes off really easily. You don't have to soak them for hours or anything. Um, yeah, nice and clean. One thing I did notice, I've kind of gone over them 
very thoroughly checked each brush for any faults or any flaws or anything like that and one thing I did notice um, the cat's tongue when it's actually got all of that glue or gum arabic out of it it, it actually forms a very funny shape. If I just dip this in some water, okay, that's loaded with water. It's kind of a cat's tongue with a very flat tip to it. I can point it up a little bit, but it won't kind of stay like that. Most of the cat's tongues that I've used have gone to a fine point. So maybe, maybe that's intentionally like that. Um, I don't know, but it, it does look a funny shape. But we'll test it, we'll see what kind of brush strokes we can get from it. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Now all of the other brushes look great. There's a nice kind of sharp chisel edge on those flat brushes. The round brushes seem to point up nicely. Have a reasonably nice point on them. There's no sort of hook tip on them or anything like that. I mean that usually occurs after time anyway, but there's nothing on them so far. Really nice point in fact. And, uh, the finish is flawless they look really nice actually they, they feel really you know real quality really nice brushes they don't feel cheap at all so we'll run a few tests on them um, when Fumui sent me the email saying that they were sending the brushes to me um, they asked if I could test for water content softness if there's any shedding of the hairs and could I compare them with other brushes that I've used in the past? So we'll test for all of those things. Okay, so first up we'll test the cat's tongue brush. Now I haven't used one of these for years. The last one I had fell to bits on me and I never bothered replacing it. I can't even remember what make it was. It wasn't a very expensive one. Um, so this is the, the second cat brush, uh, cat's tongue brush that I've ever owned in my life. So I'm not really used to using these, but we'll see yeah, just what kind of marks we make with it. I've just got some Payne's Grey on there and I just want to test to see if we actually get an imprint. I think we're going to. Um, if we actually get an imprint of the, the top of the brush there. Yeah, it does leave that kind of flat edge. If we use the brush on the side. That's fine. It's actually got quite a nice spring to it, this brush, even though it's very soft, holds a lot of water. You can see, look, as I'm pressing down, if I really press down on the base of the feather of that, that brush and really flatten it out, you can see that it kind of springs back to shape really well. That's one of the benefits, actually, um, of synthetic squirrel hair. You know, it's got more spring and snap to it but it's still nice and soft, holds a lot of water. I actually prefer them, to be honest. But I'm going to have to get used to this brush purely because of the marks that it leaves on the paper there. I mean, I guess for, you know, if you're doing, you know, clouds and things like that and you're just scumbling the brush around, you're not going to get that mark at all. So just using it as a general wash brush, you're going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so let's just do a quick test on the flat brushes. I mean, there's probably going to be no surprises here. I mean, just using it in the palette, just picking up the paint on the palette, again, this snaps back lovely into shape. I mean, obviously, we're going to get a nice sort of chisel edge with that as well. Nice clean brush stroke there. Yeah, and the, the bristles are holding together well. Usually what can happen with flat brushes, when they get a little bit dry at the end of the stroke, they start to split out like that. And you get these, you know, kind of tram lines, you know, in your brush stroke, but this isn't doing that at all. It's kind of staying together really well. I'm using quite a rough paper here, actually, so I'm going to get sort of a dry brush technique with them. So that was the size 8 flat brush. Just do a quick test with the size 16. Again, I don't think there's going to be any surprises here. I think it's going to perform just the same. Yeah, nice sharp chisel edge. And the brush, again, is holding together well, holding a lot of water, giving a nice clean stroke. 
snapping back into shape really nicely really impressed I really do like these brushes so now we'll test the largest round brush this is a size 14 this is more what I'm used to using round brushes so I'll just do a streak across the top there yeah nice smooth brush stroke it's snapping back well into shape but if I just press down again on the ferrule lift up it's snapping back okay but it is leaving a flat spot there but that's absolutely fine I mean if that was real squirrel hair that I just done that with that brush would be like that now but you can see it's kind of snapping back and retaining its shape really quite well it's been nice and soft and it is lovely and soft actually it does feel like a squirrel brush it's really nice so just you know doodling and messing around with this I can instantly see that these brushes are going to work superbly okay I'll try the one of the smaller round brushes now this is a size 4 running out of paper here Yeah, you can get a nice point. I should have tested the point on the other one, shouldn't I? Really, I'll, I'll do that in just a minute. This is a nice, fine detail brush. If I just get the size 14 again, um, is that dry? Just looking for a bit of there. We'll, we'll try it there. We'll just try the point with a size 14 brush. Not quite so good, it's a little bit thicker. That's okay. You can still get reasonable detail with it, but it, obviously it's nothing like, you know, this smaller size 4 brush. It's got a lovely detail point on it, this has. Yeah, a lovely brush. And the smallest one, the size 0, if I've got a little bit more space there, I'll just test the line width of that again that's really nice thin lines you can get with that look at that I said at the start you probably need a rigger I don't think so this brush should do it probably won't hold as much water as a rigger but look at those lovely fine lines you can get with that beautiful right okay so for the first test what I'm going to do is kind of two tests in one actually I'm going to do a comparison of the Fumui size 8 brush with three other size 8 round brushes. I've checked the ferrule sizes, they're all very similar. I think the um, the Pro Arts one I've got here might be a fraction bigger than the others, but apart from that, they're very similar, so it should be a reasonably fair test. Um, and what the test is actually going to be is water content. See how much water um, the Fumui holds compared to the other three brushes. So the other three brushes that I've got, like I mentioned, I've got the Pro Arts Proline, I've got the Escoda Perla, and I think for the best comparison of all, I've got the Escoda Ultimo. And why that's probably going to be the best comparison is because that's also a synthetic squirrel hair, the same as the Fumui. Um, the Perla, Escoda Perla, that's just a white nylon brush, and the Pro Arts is again, it's like a proline nylon type of brush. So all synthetic brushes. And what I'm going to do is paint each column with each brush and I'm going to fill each brush to its maximum capacity. I'm going to dip it in my water jar first and I'm going to dip it into a well of paint that I've got already mixed up, um, some Payne's Grey. And I'm going to do that with each brush so that each brush won't hold any more water. It's literally going to be dripping wet. So that's as probably as accurate as I can actually get to the water content to be in each brush just to try and keep things as fair as possible okay so first of all we'll do the pro art okay so I'm just dipping that in the water it's absolutely flooded now I'm dipping it into the well with the painting I can't get another drop of water on that that's dripping with water So we'll see how far down this column we can actually get before the brush actually runs dry. I'll, I'll bring some of that paint down a little bit instead of it 
all gathering at the top there as well. I'll do that with each brush so it, again it's nice and fair. So it's going quite well but it's just starting to feel a little bit dry around this area here. If I keep brushing over that I can probably fill in those gaps in the papers and again I'll do this with all of the brushes. I'll just keep going and going and going until it literally is just dry brush effect which that just about is there yeah. Okay so that's not bad. Okay so next up is the Skoda Perla and I'm just flooding the brush now with as much paint as I can possibly get on there. Absolutely dripping wet. It's probably going to run in a little bit to the the paint but that's okay. Like I said I'm going to try and bring that paint down so keep it fairly even if I can. And I must admit already this is starting to feel a little bit on the dry side. You can see it's pretty much done for about there. Try and fill those gaps in as much as I can but that's that's pretty much it. Look it's running dry now. Okay so next up is the Escoda Ultimo and again I'm getting absolutely saturated with paint literally dripping wet. You can see this actually does hold a lot of water, a lot of paint. Now this is going well. I keep that paint moving down. I mean look at that, I've still got a bead there, look. And remember as well that this is actually synthetic squirrel hair as well. I think we'll probably get all the column filled in with this. And then some, yeah we will, we can go over. Fill the gaps in there and keep that going as long as I can. That's pretty much it about there. It's kind of running dry now. So that's interesting, isn't it? Just those three comparisons alone. Okay, so the moment that we've all been waiting for, the Foom Mui. Can it compete with the Escoda Ultimo? Or will we just get something like the Escoda Perla with it? Let's have a look, let's see. Okay, so it's absolutely saturated with water. Again, I'll keep dragging that water down. Uh -huh, it's getting a little bit dry. I don't think it's going to beat the Skoda Ultimo, but I think it's going to beat the Skoda Perla. Yeah, we're about we're about out of there. Look, I'll probably try and fill those gaps a little bit more, but no, that's it. We're running dry. So it's a, a fair comparison with the Pro Art and the Fumo. They're pretty much the same. I could have probably squeezed a little bit more out of the Proline, like I did do with the Fumo just there, but obviously the Fumo isn't competing very well with the. Uh, a Skoda Ultimo, but it's absolutely hands down beaten the a Skoda Perla. So I guess really we could say that's pretty much come in joint second place, or at least second place. Probably just pipped the Pro Art um, to the post there on the water holding capabilities. Okay, so we'll do another quick test now um, for the stiffness and the softness of each brush. So I'm just going to dip it in the water shake the excess off and what I'm going to do is just literally put the heel of the brush on the paper, flatten the brush like that then lift it up and see what kind of shape we've got with the brush and that's the Foom Mui. It snapped back into shape beautifully. The Skoda Ultimo. 
bend the bristles on that. Now that snapped back pretty well, but not as well as the Fumui. The Fumui had a much nicer point and it didn't really have too much of a flat spot on one side like that. Now the Escoda Perla. Yeah, that snapped back really well. In fact, let me just shake the water off that. I think I've got a little bit too much water on that. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's probably on par with the... Well, in fact, I think the Fumu is probably pointed up a little bit better than that. Uh, but it, generally, it's it's kind of snapped back fairly level with the ferrule there. And the Pro Art. Yeah, not so good when it's snapped back. It's kind of splayed out at the end there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of splayed out at the end. It's kind of flattened off. Not particularly good. So I would say that probably the Fumui has actually snapped back into position better than the other brushes. I'll just try that one more time. Yeah, you can see, look, it's, it's pretty good, that is, isn't it? But yet, the funny thing is, it does actually feel softer by miles than any of the other brushes. It really does feel like a soft, well, not exactly like a soft squirrel brush, but the closest to a soft squirrel brush out of all of the, the brushes here that I've tested. This is probably the softest one. And as for shedding, well, there wasn't any, but I guess that's not really a fair test. Although saying that, usually when a brush sheds, um, it's usually when it's new, you know, it's usually a fault of the brush, it just sheds and sheds and sheds you can't you know stop it well you can't sometimes they'll shed for a long time um, and then just stop you know when all the loose hairs have finally come out but obviously there's no loose hairs to start with in this brush at all um, feels great you know like I say it springs back it's nice and soft it points up well lovely finish on there feels good in the hand what's not to like excellent brushes Okay, so you're probably thinking they look decent brushes, but you know, I bet they cost a bit. How much are they? Well, you'll be surprised. At the time of making this video, looking on the website, these a set of eight brushes, this exact same set, has been reduced from £35 down to, wait for this, £18 which in US dollars is about 22, 23 ish dollars. I think for eight brushes, which form a very nice comprehensive set, I think that's a steal. I really do. Although I'm not massively impressed with the cat's tongue brush, but I never have been with any um, cat's tongue brush. You might like it. Personally, I probably won't use that too much. But most definitely, these are going in my brush jar and they will be used a lot. So I think for that kind of money, plus you get a really, I know this is a bit silly to say, but I mean, plus you get a really nice sturdy cardboard box, which will double up really nicely as a travel brush case. I'd quite happily use that to stick paint brushes in, shove it in my rucksack. It's you know, it really is quite a thick, heavy duty cardboard box. Um, the packing is excellent, so you're not going to get damaged brushes in the post. I think all in all, these are a good buy. I really do think that. You know, £18, okay, if you just said for seven brushes, you know, and a cat's tongue brush, if you whether you use it or not, I think it's still a really good price for a set of brushes like that. But as always with these things, we haven't tested the longevity of these things. Does the paint crack, you know, if we store them upright in a jar? Some brushes do, some brushes don't. I really get annoyed with the brushes that do because the paint starts flaking off and they're just horrible to hold, you know, filling all those rough cracks everywhere. Um, so, you know, it's not a nice experience when you're painting. So only time will tell, you know, if the paint holds up, how hard wearing the bristles are. You know, these are things that we'll find out in time. But again, I still think for £18, even if they didn't last long, I still think 
by prices, you know, of today, I mean, let's face it, everything's going up, isn't it? You know, if we compare these with, with like a Skoda prices and things like that, you still can't go wrong with these. You know, this this um, a Skoda Ultimo here, it's already started to wear um, on the bristles there. It's kind of lost its point after quite a short time, actually. You know, even though it does hold a lot of water and it's a very decent brush, they're not cheap brushes. They're really not. You probably only get two Skoda brushes for the same price as this whole set. Now, if you thought £18 sounds like a really good uh, price for these brushes, it gets even better. What I'm going to do is in the description below, I'm going to put a discount code there for you. And if you go onto the Fumui website, which there'll also be a link in the description below, um, to their website. If you go on there and you use the discount code that I give you underneath the video, um, you'll get another 20% off. I mean, come on. I mean, what a bargain. And I should just say as well, I'm not being paid or anything or sponsored or anything like that to promote these brushes and sell them. This is an honest review. If I didn't like them, I'd tell you outright, as I have done with other reviews that I've made about art materials. Um, so there's no you know, cash incentive for me at all with these. So I'll leave it up to you. You know, my conclusion is I would happily spend £18, particularly with another 20% off. Um, I'd quite happily pay that for these brushes and be delighted with them. And it's like I say, don't just take my word for it. Go and have a look on Alan Owen's channel. He loves them, even though they're not the same set as mine. He's got a little travel brush set. So like I say, Alan is so experienced with his watercolour painting, he knows what he's talking about with brushes. So I really do trust his opinion. And when Alan said that the Fumui brushes are great, he's not kidding. I totally agree with him. They are great brushes. Now you're probably thinking, why haven't I actually done a full-on painting demonstration with them? I usually do with all of my reviews. Well, I'm going to do that in the next video. So I don't want this video to go on too long. Um, and Fumui really only asked me just to do a test, you know, an unboxing and to test for the water content, softness, shedding and comparisons with other brushes. So I've done that, but I will be doing a full painting demonstration with them, probably in the next video or the one after that. You're going to see me using these a lot anyway. Um, so I'll be talking about them more as time goes on, as I'm using them more anyway. Don't know how long that um, discount code is going to last for. Um, but when I use these brushes in my future videos, I will put a link to the website so you can actually go and buy them, you know, further on down the road if you want to. Okay, so that's the review of the Fumui brushes. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. Please leave a comment as well. I'd love to read your comments. I'll always try and get back to you if I can. So if you've got any more questions or anything about these brushes, fire away. I'm always happy to help. Okay, so take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.